Lord said to me, he said, you're about to go to gates of cities. The Lord says you're going to send teams. They're going to be fire teams. The Lord said, when you go, you loose the fire, then I'll loose the wind, and it will be a movement like never before. So we, so we had our clear assignment now for Alabama. Present Alabama to the Lord. Pray for soil in every county. Then the Lord said, go to the city gates. That's what Chuck said. So we begin to set appointments with all government officials in each 67 counties. And so we would go to the government officials and we would the council, the commissioner, the mayor, and we would, they would allow us in and we would pray with them. And we would ask them to agree with us, Psalm 24, open up ye heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the king of glory come in. And so January 10th, we launched All In Alabama. This is the very first meeting, Chuck, we had, and, you know, to be honest, it was only by faith. We didn't know how we were going to do it. We, we didn't obviously believe we were qualified to do it, but we just felt such a unction that, you know, worst case basis, we try. And so I got up, and I'll be honest, I was a bit nervous, and, you know, I didn't know what to do. It was kind of outside our realm, outside. There were city officials there. You can see us. We're gathered there in the, in the first church in Calhoun County. And the word from Chuck was, you release the fire. I'll send the wind. So I'm thinking, how do you release the fire? I mean, it's like, fire. I mean, I, you know, like, I mean, do you strike a match? I mean, I, how, what do you? I mean, I've seen them like fire. So I thought, well, but how do you actually release fire? So I got to the end and just really nervous. I honestly, I didn't feel a whole lot of anointing. And I just went, fire. <laughs> and nobody fell down. Nobody cried. Nobody screamed. Nobody shouted. Just fire. Two minutes later, every person's cell phone went off with a weather alert. What did it say? Wind advisory for all 67 counties of Alabama. You release the fire and I will send the wind. You don't have to feel it. You don't have to see it. You just put it in the atmosphere and let the Holy Ghost move. and emotion and that type of stuff's coming to an end the word of God says Samuel's word would not fall to the ground God's raising up a kingdom people a kingdom priest and you're going to call things that are not as though they should be and with your words you're going to shift the atmosphere Next slide, Bev wrote powerful prayers of proclamation we'd put out in the spirit. Sometimes we'd have 500 there. Sometimes we'd have five. We didn't, we, all we kept leaning on was Chuck said, you're only after the triumphant reserve. And we just trusted if it was 500 in that county or five in the next county that we were on assignment. Doing what God said to do. It got really wild. On this journey, Chuck, that's the senators and representatives in Montgomery at the legislature. 
Mac McCutcheon's a house speaker through Les Steele invited us to come preach to them all in Alabama in Montgomery to the legislators. We preached at the prayer breakfast to just a handful. Speaker of the house said, Chuck, he's Chuck, Speaker of the house said to me, he said, Kent, now I know this wasn't planned, but I need you to come stand on the Senate floor. We're going to open session today, and the first thing we want you to do is release the anointing of the Holy Ghost on the Senate floor of Alabama. Come on, somebody. God just started opening doors. We had never seen anything like this. God began to do miracles in government. My, uh, Mark Gidley, a pastor with our team from Alabama, he and I went to one of the first counties in Etowah County to a probate judge's office. Walked in, you know, and posh office and... You know, I've got my courage up. Because you're out here. I mean, I've never done this kind of stuff before. So we got out here and he said, first thing, uh, I just need you to know I'm very conservative. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. And so he talked on me. He said, did I mention I'm very conservative? <laughs> I said, yes, sir. We talked on me, And he said one more time, he said, not to be offensive, but I, I'm you know, like literally, I don't really believe what you're doing. I'm very conservative. I said, Well, thank you. And I understand that. I said, But I know this. When I was praying over your picture this morning, the Lord told me something about you. He said, Excuse me? I said, The Lord told me something about you. He said, What did he tell you? I said, He told me you love mercy. And you walk humbly. Tears started rolling down his face. He said, how did you know that? I said, the Lord told me. He said, there's a file on my desk that I've been walking the floors thinking about all day. It's a young lady that's supposed to lose her children by law. She, this is her last chance. But something inside of me will not let me bring that verdict on her life and keeps telling me that I should treat her with mercy. I know God just spoke to you and told me that I'm supposed to treat this girl with mercy. See, what I didn't realize, when you get out there in this realm, God will begin to show up to back you up. You're not out there on your own. So Mark Gidley and another pastor and I, we joined our arms around this, this, this judge, and we, we, we broke stronghold. Well, no, we didn't even say stronghold. We just blessed, this, blessed the city, blessed the county, prayed some things, about five-minute prayer, shook hands and left. Five minutes later, he chased us down in the parking lot. He said, hey, 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 I had to find you. He said, you're not going to believe this. He said, I told you I'm very conservative. I said, yes, sir. He said, I actually don't believe in charismatic things. I said, yes, sir. He said, but I cannot deny what just happened when you, when you men prayed. He said, while you were praying, I got a phone call on my iWatch. That's why I moved my arm off your shoulder while you were praying. He said, I can't tell you the details because of confidentiality. All I can tell you is this. When you prayed, I got a call from the leaders of this city, the mayor and the sheriff, and a 50-year stronghold just broke off this county when you guys... Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. One of, the part, one of the folks that are on our team, we were at their city. We prayed over their city council and their mayor. This is in Alabama. And right when we got through praying, the mayor said, can I pray? After we all prayed, he said, can I pray? We said, sure. He said, do you mind if I get down on my knees? We said, no. He got down on his knees and said, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I need to receive you into my life. 
I am so sorry that I have rejected your Holy Spirit. And today I give you not only my life, but I give you this city that I'm in charge of. And as long as I'm the mayor of this city, I say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this city in Alabama. As long as I, my God. And on and on and on the stories go. This is a point I got to make. Next slide. This is our fire team, Chuck. Back up one. Bev and I got really ill during this time, and we were quarantined for three or four weeks, and then I had shoulder surgery. But our team kept going. This is something important. The season we're in is not about one man or one woman or one person doing this anymore. It's about teams of sons and daughters we've raised up in the kingdom to begin to do bigger and greater and more than we could even think about. And we were so proud of our fire teams. We had our recovery ministry. These are girls that are actually in recovery. They dressed up in fatigues, and in every county, they danced in fatigues. Break every chain. God is raising up an army. Now listen. Here's what I was excited about. Chuck, we couldn't afford a 15 passenger van, so we found an old limo for $4,000. We'd pile them recovery girls in there with their fatigues. We'd roll up there in Alabama, vape smoke coming out the window when they got out. You know, they're like, who in the world is this tribe here in Alabama? Them girls climb up, them vape smoke coming out, climb out in them fatigues. They're like, my God, what have we gotten into? But as soon as they hit that platform and started dancing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, chains started breaking, stuff started shifting, God started moving, and the glory began to manifest. Why am I saying that? Don't wait till you get free of everything. Just jump in and let God set you free in the journey. Somebody shout, he's about to break some chains.